Good morning, chickens. We'll be turning compost for you soon. I'm realizing with this chicken composting system, it is always evolving. It's always shifting just a tiny bit here or there. And it feels like an opportunity to share notes with folks quite frequently. So in this video, I'm gonna show a minor upgrade to our composting system, our little flow system that may be of value to you. So stick around. It's fun letting the hens out each morning and having little piles of soaked grain in various spots that they could come enjoy. This gives us pleasure each morning. But anyway, let me get back to what I was going to look at. By no means is it a fundamental redo of the entire layout at all, but I think it's a good opportunity to remind folks that if you're working with a composting system with chickens, that uh, if you get stuck on the idea that you need to get it perfect right out of the gate, you miss an opportunity to make lots of little mistakes and have the system itself inform the evolution. And so back in here, a couple days ago, we had it just a big pile of old hay. That's been since moved to a much cleaner spot to store it, but I've left a little just as bulking. And we had an opportunity to go get another load of wonderful sawdust, which I've been really thrilled to have access to. Scott, thank you so much if you watch the channel. Barnwood Attics, if you ever get to buy um, cool custom furniture from someone in the Finger Lakes area, check out Scott at Barnwood Attics. Anyway, I needed a place to put the sawdust that was meaningful. And so we relayed this out where we've got a larger area to receive incoming food scraps and now a whole bunch of really nice, easy to access carbon right nearby. It's similar to a pattern we worked with in a lower area, uh, but now this has been the area where we've been dumping. It's the most private and out of the way. It's the most secluded, so it bothers neighbors potentially the least. And so it's kind of our default place to add food scraps and having an area for the food scraps that's nice and broad for the summer and a whole bunch of carbon right nearby is super useful. As a side note, a few people commented in the past video about how there's, I guess, a thing going around the milk crate challenge. I looked it up and it seems like people buy a bunch of or get a bunch of milk crates and make a pile of them and then climb on them and fall over and get hurt. Really asinine stuff. But here's a milk crate challenge for those of you that are doing chicken composting. Maybe try to find kids that are making these piles of milk crates and hurting their backs and see if you can get the milk crates when they're done doing that and they are done with their TikTok video and fold them into your system. Milk crates are awesome for either injuring stupid kids or having compost be organized and have areas for worms and pill bugs and lots and lots of food and <laughs> wonder for your head. So consider that a milk crate challenge to take that from the waste stream of some weird popular moment and fold it into something as a durable, useful way to organize nutrient flow in a landscape. We can take over the milk crate challenge hashtag and turn it into something actually meaningful. <laughs> It's incredible how many worms get into a milk crate within a few days. I think I just filled these up three or four days ago and already there's tons of red wigglers in there. So a great way to separate areas and also create a huge um, increase in soil life and protein for the hens. It's pretty stunning what these aquatic vegetables can do in a chicken yard. Not only is it incredible food value for the hens, but my gosh, do they grow fast. I think I had the pond relatively cleared just a few weeks ago. And with the heat of the summer and a good couple rains to recharge the pond area, you can see I have a lot more to pull, but I don't want to shock the system. We'll pull just that for today. Let the duckweed push a bit more and then pull some more. And what's fun is the chickens can manage the outer bounds of the water celery. Got this little simple ring of two by four welded wire. And you can see they graze it super hard all day. So it's basically like a salad bar available to them. If we had running water through here, we certainly would do this pattern with watercress. Uh, but for still excess nutrient water loaded or excess nutrient loaded water, um, the water celery and the duckweed have just been incredible. And I don't know if it got caught on film, but a nice fat little frog toad just jumped, frog I think, just jumped in there. So that tells me that there's enough filtering going on with these plants that it is also a healthy and safe space for frogs. We could probably even throw a couple of fish in there if we wanted, but it seems like the frogs are keeping up with the mosquitoes just fine. 
but yeah, aquatic filtering perennials, nutrient-dense perennials in a chicken yard context has been just so wonderful. Anyway, all in all, just a minor update, but I feel like an opportunity to remind folks, for those of you that are just getting into this, that you know we've been at this for now six years, six years plus, uh, trying to figure out the best ways to our ability to provide really nice habitat and fun for our hens while also generating fertility and compost. And the flow patterns, the layout, the system fundamentally shifts all the time. By no means would I say we've gotten it right, quote unquote. And so hopefully that's helpful to you in your process. Wherever you are, you probably will be somewhere else in a year or two, and that's awesome. Anyway, there's that. And then <laughs> let's reclaim Milk Crate Challenge for something better than kids breaking their backs. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>